All right, time to bleed. Yep, yep, yep. Back to the trenches. So it is quite snowy out there today. Yeah, we're gonna back out of the garage here and get going. Okay, I'm feeling feeling like hard style today. How about you? How about you? What, what are you feeling? Like? I'm feeling I'm feeling loud. Pump up music to get us going, to get us revving. Okay, right, put her in four wheel drive here. And there we go. All right, hard style. Let's get it. God, I love when people stare at me when I'm dancing like that. Just jealous. They're jealous. All right. We are off to the gym here. And uh, today, today, I'm going to talk to you guys today about self-talk, okay? It's a big, big topic, so listen up. If there's one thing you ever take useful from any of my videos for, you know, motivation or inspiration or just something to learn from this this is I would hope would be the one thing you do self-talk so I always notice lots of people you know they always try and like talk themselves down a little bit which I, I used to understand because I, I used to kind of do it too but then then I learned how to like you know flip that switch whenever whenever you talk about yourself either in your head or out loud and especially out loud because once you said out loud then you've kind of brought it to life anytime you talk about yourself it should always be you know positive things for for the most part you know but if anyone asks me like oh any injuries like how's the body doing I would either jokingly say like oh I'm doing amazing you know kind of sarcastic or I would just say good enough I would never say oh this hurts and this hurts and because then then I brought it to life and I'm saying like oh like they do hurt then my mind understands it hurts and then it kind of in a way it hurts more because now you've accepted it the, tr the trick yeah, kind of is gonna sound bad you know the trick is to kind of like live in a denial state of mind convincing yourself that things are better than they are you know that that fake it the fake it till you make it quote Just, you gotta you gotta pretend everything's going good until it is going good so like and I want I want you guys to try this today or tomorrow depending on what time you watch this video but if you're feeling tired or anything like especially if you if I'm feeling tired like this is what you gotta do kind of look yourself in the mirror and say I feel I feel amazing I feel so awake right now I just just exaggerate the hell out of it. Say like, oh, I feel like I've never felt awake like this in my life. I've never felt so awake in my life. And it's just, it's weird, you know? Like I'll do that on days where I feel tired. I'll look in the mirror and I'll say that kind of to myself, looking in my eyes and then I, boom. Obviously it's not like a shot of vodka, like you're not gonna feel wide awake. But like you have this sudden click where you feel way more awake than you did before. Because, you know, deep down, you actually, you were, you weren't that, you weren't as tired as you thought. But since you kind of felt tired, then you're like, oh, I feel tired, and then you feel more tired, and then more tired. Because you keep convincing yourself that you're so tired, but you're not actually that tired. So you just gotta tell yourself, like, I am, I am wide awake right now. Just little self-talk things like that, it'll, it'll change your life. Like another thing about the being tired thing, like day two of my competition, I already talked about this in like literally the last car ride talk. But day two of comp, I, I felt so like super tired in the beginning. And I don't know why, I just couldn't seem to like wake myself up. But I didn't walk around like telling people like, oh, I feel so tired today. And it's not out of the aspect of like, I want people to think, like I don't want anyone thinking I look weak. No, it was like, once I tell people I'm feeling tired, then, then it's, then I brought it to life, you know? And if you got any sort of, you know, aches or pains, obviously not full on broken bone injuries, but like any sort of aches or pains, just tell yourself like it, it doesn't hurt as much. I, I always tell myself, okay, you're just looking for attention here. You're not, it doesn't hurt as bad as you think. You're just seeking out attention. So just don't, don't do that. Like most of the time stuff doesn't hurt or ache or pain as much as you think. You're, you're deep down, maybe you don't even know it. You're kind of just like looking for attention. You're looking for people to look at you in a way of like to pity you and feel bad for you because you have to train in all this pain and all these aches. Like, you know, it obviously doesn't look too great on my part because I always say to the camera whatever's hurting and stuff, but I'm never, I'm never fully honest with the camera with how much stuff actually hurts. At the end of the video, if you see me with the camera in the Jeep and I'm doing like an end of the video outro and then I'm talking about my pain or stuff like that, it's because I didn't want to say it during training because if I say it during training, then it fucks with the training because then I've accepted that 
this hurts or this hurts or this hurts. So I never really try to say it during training unless it really hurts, then sometimes I'll say it in the video during training. But I always like to try and wait till you know the end of training if I want to say it. The little part that kind of sucks with that though is it kind of seems like I'm giving an excuse as to like why this wasn't as good or this wasn't as good is because oh now he's saying it hurts but yeah i only ever really say it at the end of the video but yeah that's it for the car ride talk so you know for the whole day whole day okay after you've watched this video i want you to walk around and say nothing but good stuff about yourself obviously you know don't be like a douche and kind of like oh i'm the best ever i'm the best at this nothing hurts me you know just be like if someone's like oh How's it going? Oh, I feel great. I feel great. You know, just only ever nice things to say about yourself out loud and even try like just only thinking about good things about yourself. It'll uh, it'll boost your energy. It'll, it'll just make you feel better and more awake in general. You know, you, don't, you won't feel so like slouchy and sloppy throughout the day. It'll make you feel better. So just, you know, give it a go. Right? Self-talk. All right. <laughs> we are at the gym, the red zone, the dead zone, the kill zone, the war zone. <sighs> Let's get to work, shall we? All right, handstand conditioning, but first I want to show you guys something, okay? If you scroll all the way back to day number 50, 50, five, zero. Do you remember when I did all those P-bar dismounts that day? I did 47 P-bar dismounts. About a minute and a half in between every single dismount. 37 of them landed, 10 stuck. The goal is to stick 10. No matter how many it took, even if it took me about 90 dismounts to stick 10, then I would have done that. But it only took me 37. So I did a total of 47. 37 of them landed, 10 stuck. I'm just using this as an example right now because I don't know why it's still I guess no one's used this board It's still on here from like 50, 80 days ago now go watch day one and day two of my competition Both stuck stuck both dismounts. I'll just play them back for you See that see how I stuck both of them like perfect sticks not like oh stick no, fucking flawless sticks. It's because of like days like this, you know, where you really push the limit of hell. That's how you win. Now, sadly, didn't win P-bars, fell on the second day on the damn off one and a quarter. So clearly we're gonna work on something there. It's called the kit. Oh yeah? So uh, I haven't run it up yet because I just got back from the comp. So I kind of did nothing for the weekend, but I got right up a new training plan where I incorporate all my routines plus training new skills on each event to create new routines. So we're gonna start working on the kip on the P-bar there to save my routine if I fall on that one a quarter, but stuck both dismounts because I train them so much. Because you should be training them so much to the point where falling is just not even an option. Landing it is a shock to you and then sticking it is the normal, you know? Like pretty much every routine leading up to that competition too, I was sticking all my dismounts in the routine. Which is pretty cool, you know? Just kind of want to show that board because I guess for some reason that board's still not wiped off. So I can get that board framed, put up on the wall there as a reminder that hard work pays off. Okay, so now, ah, handstand conditioning. Back to it. Fucking gotta love handstand conditioning. Oh. Oh, fuck. Got me feeling so high. You're such a beautiful drug. Happy Monday morning. Oh yeah, whenever you guys comment saying like that this, watching these videos is like your daily routine. I don't know, that's just the coolest thing ever to me. That my like daily vlogs of all my training and whatever, it's like your daily routine to watch them. I don't know, that's just so cool to me. Kind of motivates me to like stay consistent with it and keep posting them. Because if only like 20 people ever watched them and they just like occasionally watched them here and there and I only ever got like 20 views, then I probably wouldn't be as consistent with it. But to know that there's like a good, you know, probably around 100 people that watch these every single day. Oh, three, 300 people I'd say, because I average at least like 300 views at a minimum. It means there's probably around 300 people that watch it every single day, which is pretty dandy, pretty cool. I don't know, I'm just shocked. Not a single one of them has blown up yet, you know? None of them have gone viral, which is okay. 
That's not what I'm really aiming for, but like, you'd think after 130 some days, one of them would have hit like, and I'm not talking about a million views, I'm talking about like one of them hitting maybe 10,000 views. I'm just shocked, not a single one has. Like I'll occasionally get every, I don't know, 10 days, it seems like I get one that hits like 1,000 views, and it goes back to like three to 600 views, and then 1,000 views, which is nice, you know? It's consistent, I like consistency. Even if it's just low numbers, that's good. It's good enough with me. As long as you guys are enjoying the videos of who's watching, it's all that matters. Okay, now for the beautiful pirouettes. By the way, if you're new here, I do three my good way and then three my bad way. That's why those second three looked so wonky. All right, now three of reverse pirouettes, my good way and bad way. One bar swing so hand stands. Oh. Hey. All right, Japanese handstand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Straight to heaven. Why does it feel lower than normal? One, two, three, four, seven. seven. Feels off. It's weird. I'm usually not as low. The rings are also so uneven. <clears throat> yeah, that won't work. I have to raise it now. Look at this. This one's still above. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is the new number now. Time for vault. We're gonna start working uh, two and a half twists now. Usually we just do double twists. Now we're gonna start working two and a half. Maybe today, maybe not. We'll see how today goes. But uh, same as usual, two handsprings and then one or two folds and then one or two double twists. And then if it all like feels good, we'll try a couple two and a half today, but we'll see. All right, first day back on vault. So yeah, let's get started. Handspring number one. Handspring number two. All right, full twist number one. Well, that was that was good. Hey, oh uh, yeah, we're. I don't even know if we're gonna do double twists today. We're gonna just keep doing folds. Maybe maybe I'll feel warmed up enough for at least a double. But yeah, uh, we're gonna just keep doing folds, I guess. Uh, so yeah, full twist number one. No, uh, two. Full twist number two. All right, at least that was better than the last one. Deadly, okay. Full twist number three. Okay, we're gonna do one more full twist, then we're done. Full twist number four. We're done, vault. It's enough. It ain't coming. <sighs> You know, every time I do vault in the morning, it always, it always starts off all like droopy and you know, not great. But I do my two handsprings and I feel warmed up a bit. Then I do my one fold and I'm feeling good. So I'm like, okay, double twist. And I'm always I'm always good by the end. I've done two handsprings, four folds. I feel the exact same as when I started. This is usually why I do vault every single day because then it builds a kind of like consistent pattern and my body starts to get used to it and understand every single morning we're doing vault. But since I haven't done vault in the morning since before I left for the comp and then I haven't really done it since I got back, I figured it was gonna be like this today and that's okay. They weren't like too, too bad. They weren't, they weren't the greatest. They'll, they'll be better tomorrow, all right? But yeah, 
That, that's it for the vault. Let's go do some. Let's go do some landings. All right, one stick of all the stuff that I normally do, and then we're done. Landings. Done. All right, that is the end of first training. I would usually do pommel Monday morning. Today I don't want to. Well, I want to, but I know it's not gonna be good. And I want it to be good because I wanna work my, uh, the new skill, my Makulik. And I don't wanna just go up there and do a bunch of shitty tries. So we'll do pommel in the afternoon, plus all the other events. So yeah, that's why we're not doing it in the morning. Ah, but that is the end of first training. See you guys, second training. All right, welcome back to the gym. Welcome to second training. Getting started on the floor. Oh, oh that felt amazing. Alright guys, that was a half routine. It was it was iffy. I wasn't no, I don't wanna say it. I wanna say it. Floor is good. Floor is good. We're gonna do uh, my little sideline press there because I wanna add in a straddle press to handstand now. So I'll go my normal Japanese press, then I'll go roll forward into a regular press to handstand. And then it adds a B into my routine, which is nice. That'd be nice, nice, easy little add-on. But I gotta work it to make it good. Because it's it's an easy skill, but to make it, you know, perfect takes some time. So Hopefully we can get it good here. We will get it good. It's not that hard of a skill. It'll just take a little a couple weeks and then we'll be clean in the routine, you know? All right, we're gonna do my third line into it. So the half-half and then the split press crab, all right? Welcome back to my channel, guys. Um, nobody else is here yet, so just me. He's doing another set because they were all bad, every single one. Okay, last attempt. Uh, that was good. We'll finish on that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for parallel bars. All right, Noah. Noah just made an amazing grip on the P bars. And we're gonna go and ruin it. Woo. 
Ki. Ja, ich bin Pampel. Okay, people are team number one. Let's get it. Yeah, we gotta remake that. Alright, the grip on our bars compared to uh, any any competition bar that I've ever been on in my life. Ours is like, fucking, it sucks. The grip on our bars sucks. Like, I have to spend so much time making a grip in our gym, and at comps, it's just like, I, bar I barely make a grip in competition just because the bars are always so good. So, yeah, that transition of uh, comp to back home here with our bars is not, not fun. Okay, I am very much unable to make a grip. Spent, spent him way too much time making a grip, so we're not going to do hang. We're, gonna do, we're just going to do a peach from a little swing, and then the rest of the routine. Because this, this is a big waste of time to try and make a grip just for these two skills that are normally fine. So, uh, routine number two. We are gonna do one set of Damanoff, Damanoff one and a quarter, double pike. So we're gonna do one more set of that, and then we're good. First day off was bad, so we kind of just restarted while I was on the bars. We're done now, that's good, that was good enough. Time for high bar. All right, welcome to high bar. Get warmed up and uh, let's, let's get started. Hopefully, hopefully full routines. If not, first half, second half, whatever. We'll, we'll see how it feels, and then we'll carry on from there, all right? Guys, thank you, Pola. <laughs> it was great. Old turkey routine. Not bad for a cold turkey. All right, that routine was uh, not bad. We're gonna try the Kovacs connected to Coleman connection one more time. Yeah, cool, cool stuff. Ah. I had a stand high bar. It was good progress for the 5 8 routine. Uh, I didn't do the soup full though, but you know, the uh, Kovacs Coleman connection in the routine. It's pretty close. My uh, last couple attempts, I just kept pulling right at the end. So, uh, you know, next time we do high bar, I won't pull like that. I'll just flip and catch it. All right, now, uh, now it's time for, and for a little bit of pommel. All right, so uh, let's, let's go to pommel. All right, welcome to pommel. Uh, we're using this angle because the guys are on that pommel there. We're just gonna do a cold turkey pommel routine and, and then we're done. All right, so yeah, it's uh, pommel routine number one.
hurts doing a cold turkey. If your shoulders aren't stretched out at all. All right, we fix up the camera angle. All routine number two. I don't really know what's going on here. Uh, usually it would take me maximum two tries to hit a palm routine, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Today's, today's one of those days, you know, being being tested. That's okay. That's okay. I like to be tested. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna keep doing palm here, hopefully, on, on until we uh, hit a routine. Let's keep trying, shall we? All right. Palm routine number three. So that was a good save for a shitty day. Yeah, it's near the end of the day. I told you guys about self-talk, okay? At no point throughout the day have I said it yet. But today, oh, today's fucking horrible. I feel like shit the whole day. I didn't want to say it aloud, but I, I don't know what it is. I didn't wake up at 3 a.m. today like I usually do. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's because I didn't wake up super early. I don't know. I just feel like ass, man. So we're going to give her one more go, and then we're done. One more try. All moon routine attempt number four. Let's go. Okay, we're trying another ball routine number five. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the Jeep. Good stuff. Okay, we made that fifth palm routine. If you guys were ever wondering, when I say on palm, like, oh, we're gonna do one more and then that's it, whether I make it or not, I'm always, when it's on palm, 99% of the time, I'm lying. I'm gonna do that palm routine until I hit it. I just always try to like put pressure on myself by saying like, oh, the, Ashton, this is your last attempt. This is your last try with like trying to get this uh, routine or else you have to be done. But I very well know that if I don't make it, I will just keep going. Like I would have stayed there at least another two hours to get that routine if I had to, which might seem silly to most people, but now at least I, can say I got second on Palma at Elite to like prove that the way I train on Palma works. So yeah, a little tip if you wanna get consistent on Palma on days where you know, you just feel like shit. You cannot hit a routine for the life of you. You stay on palm until you hit one routine. Whether it's clean or dirty, doesn't matter. You hit a full routine. And on days where you know, your circles feel good, it feels like everything feels good, just do like one or, no. Like, sometimes one routine. You know, if your palm gets really consistent, just do one routine every day. But if it's like pretty consistent, do two to three palm routines every day. And then on days where you just feel like absolute shit, you have to go until you make it. Doesn't matter how long it takes. And I've been doing that since I was really young. Like my coach used to get mad at me for how long I used to like stay on palm and stuff. Cause it's like, it's like, okay, hey, move on to your other events. You gotta work on your other stuff. But I was like, no, I have to, I have to make this routine and then I can move on. And look at me, 20 years later, it's paying off. Playing the long game, that's for sure. All right, that's good. All right, so if you want to get good at pommel, do an aggressive amount of routines, whether you feel like it or not, that's how you get better. And the same with all the other events too, you know? Whether you feel like it or not, because the days where you don't feel like it, that's where you're getting, like, that's where you're getting tested, you know? God's testing you to see how bad you actually want it, you know? All right, good stuff. That is the end of training. If you watched the full video and enjoyed it, I'm glad to hear that. If you watched the full video, let's comment the word five. Took me a while to figure that one. Five, okay. Because it took me five attempts to make that palm routine. F I V E five. Alright. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye, I love you.